What's up guys, Duarte here with another Marvel Strike Force video and in this video we are going to talk about the Famine Scourge event and we are going to take a look at the tier list of the best characters you should invest on then we are going to take a look at the best teams that you can make for with those characters and also we are going to take a look at the best E4s and the best ISOH for each of those characters and a few important details that you need to have into consideration when we are talking about uh, the T4s and uh, the ISO weight because it's not uh, like 100% uh, clear and you have to adapt your strategy and your team based of uh, Alliance Wars or based from other game modes to adapt to the Scourge event. So like always, if you like the information on this video, make sure you share it with your friends on Facebook and Discord. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe for more Marvel Strike Force content and make sure you smash that like button. Okay, so let's get started, let's talk about it. Supposedly, Rogue is going to be the character and uh, I hope she gets this red outfit because the green one, it means she's a good girl. But on this one, I think she's gonna be a little bit more uh, uh, sassy than usual. Okay, so let's get started. Let's take a look at the tier list. So we have the characters available for uh, this event. We have the Young Avengers, we have the Inhumans and we have the A-Force. So, of course, like always, we know that uh, Squirrel Girl is going to be the best character. Uh, she has the best kit, she provides the most utility for her team, she has insane amount of stats, and she also provides stats buffs to her team. So she's going to be the S tier because she influences so many characters that are good on this team. So on, on S tier we only have Squirrel Girl and that's fine. So on A tier we have uh, Kate Bishop, we have Miss Marvel, we have Jessica Jones and we have uh, Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman. Okay, so Kate Bishop, she's amazing. She can flip positive effects on the enemies. She can apply blinds and slow to the enemies. She can do her ultimate that also applies blinds and a bunch of other negative effects. So based on that alone, she is very, very useful in terms of control and in terms of strategy. So 100% A tier. She also provides buffs to the team, offense up, and uh, something else I don't remember, but yeah, she's a great character. She's the second you should invest on. Third you should invest on is Miss Marvel. And this is because of uh, what she provides to the team. She also provides buffs to the team with additional armor. She provides energy to the team. She has the auto taunt whenever any of her allies, whether they are Young Avengers or not, she will taunt. And if it's Young Avengers, she's also going to get deflect. So she's an auto self-sustained tank, a one-man army almost. And uh, the amazing things that she provides to the team are just great for this type of game modes. Once again, the energy and uh, additional armor, the flags and so on. So great character. Now we have Jessica Jones and she's the first character of the A-Force, but she's a very flexible character. She doesn't have exactly to be on the A-Force. With her special, she can clear negative effects from uh, all allies. She can also give barrier to all allies. She can give energy to all allies as well with her special. So very, very strong special. With the ultimate, she can clear negative effe uh, positive effects from the enemies, multiple enemies, which is decent. Basic gives more energy and the passive gives additional resistance and other effects to CT characters. And we have several CT characters on the, on the higher tier list, here, up, higher up here on the tier list, so that's great. Okay, then we have uh, Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman. She can apply a bunch of negative effects, including ability block, uh, offense down for two turns. So that together with the characters like uh, Miss Marvel, it's gonna be very, very strong. And uh, she can also apply the abil ability block. She can also extend other ability blocks and stuns in case you have them. And she can also extend blinds with her ultimate. She has self-sustain thanks to her passive. She gives extra HP to the A-Force allies. So it's a great character overall. And he's the last character on the A tier. Now on the B tier, we have Echo. And Echo, she provides a lot of utility for her team thanks to different buffs that she gives. She gives 25% more damage to the entire team, to the entire uh, Young Avengers. She is also able to apply evades to the team, all the Young Avengers, uh, and uh, it's going to be able to do evades. It's not just one, it's two evades if you do the T4 on the special. So a very, very strong ability. And on top of that, she also gives defense up for two turns on spawn 
for the Young Avenger allies. This is very, very strong, and this is the only way that we can get uh, the defense up on this team, and especially on spawn, it's a very strong uh, ability. She also lowers the chance of the enemies of uh, assisting, so it's going to be very, very important in case uh, there are any enemies that assist, you want her to stop uh, all of that. Then we have Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo is the first inhuman that we have here. She has a lot of flexibility. She can work together with the Young Avengers or with the A-Force. So it's a character that is very flexible. Of course, you want to use her together with Black Bolt if you can. But if you can't, she's overall a, a nice plug-and-play character. Then we have Miles. Miles is a very strong character. We probably, most of us already worked on him based on the previous Scourge event. And he's able to apply Disrupt to multiple characters uh, for one turn or two turns, depending if it's the primary target or not. He is able to dispel positive effects on the enemies with his isolate attack, and he can also extend the negative effects on the enemies and the turn rewind them, which is a very, very strong ability. He also gets dodge for himself whenever he goes on stealth, and he has a high chance, 50% chance of uh, dodging whenever he's on stealth. And he gets all the buffs that the Young Avengers get, so all these extra evades and the offense up, uh, additional armor and drain and so on, he will get all of that, so he will be incredibly strong on this team. Okay, so on C tier we have Black Bolt, and Black Bolt is just, uh, it's like Captain Marvel, they are just okay, that's why on, they are on the C tier. He provides a decent amount of buffs for other Inhumans, he gives 50% HP, which makes a huge difference, and he has a lot of functionality with his basic. He can uh, remove positive effects from the enemies and also flip negative effects on himself if the enemies have slow. So this is going to be extremely important to make sure that he has some kind of mechanics to clear himself and be able to do more damage. Another thing that he has good is his special that does 600% base damage, which is very, very strong. And it's unavoidable, so in case we are facing some dodgy characters, it's going to make a huge difference. We have to remember also that he has a very strong passive that stops summoners. So if you have any kind of Ultron or Dr. Octopus or Nick Fury or whatever, he's going to apply this drop to them. And then they will not be able to spread the positive effects like Nick Fury or Ultron or whatever. So, very strong character. Finally, on the C tier, we have Captain Marvel, and uh, she's only here because she has huge stats, insane amount of HP, armor, damage, uh, resistance, and so on. She also heals himself, uh, but in terms of utility, she has minor utility. She's not that great in the game modes like the Scourge, Dark Dimension, and so on. So, this is why she's on C tier, and uh, it's, it's mostly because she soaks so much damage. Okay, on the D tier, we have uh, Crystal and uh, Nico. Crystal, she doesn't provide much to her team, as her basic is quite decent, applies bleed and also applies slow for two turns, but uh, she has trash focus, so she has some problems dealing, applying these negative effects. You might uh, require like a yo-yo or whatever to color for assist more time, so you have more chances of applying those negative effects. And uh, she also has, uh, on her ultimate, if the enemies have summons, she will stun all the summons. So this is going to be very convenient in case we are facing summoners. So because she's on the D tier and because she doesn't have a lot of utility, she shouldn't be a, a priority for you. Then we have Nico, and Nico, outside of Alliance War, her kit is 100% trash. Her kit is 100% not reliable. So this is why she's on D tier. She has decent stats. She is fast, but beyond that, her kit is so much RNG and it's not good for this type of events. If you want to have a 6% chance like you had on the first courage event, go ahead and invest on her. I don't really advise that for that. You have way better options than her. So in my opinion, you should avoid her as much as possible. Finally, or uh, finally, yes, we have the last three characters. On E tier, we have American Chavez and Quake. American Chavez, she provides 25% extra HP to the Young Avengers, but beyond that, it's not that great. She doesn't do anything special. She can apply defense down with her basic, clear some positive effects or whatever, but this is nothing special, and uh, any other character here can do a lot better than her. Then we have Quake. 
Quake, it's unfortunate that she is on E tier, and that's because she has trash focus, she is not super reliable, she doesn't have enough HP, she doesn't have enough armor, and even together with Yo-Yo, uh, reducing the damage and so on, it's not gonna be super great because uh, she, she, the, the speed is not good enough and uh, everything else is not good enough. It's just, she does nice things, but not uh, enough to be relevant. So this is why she's on E tier. And finally on the F tier, we have Karnak and uh, yes, Karnak, he has a turn rewind for one target only with his special and he also applies slow. Unfortunately, that's not enough he, and on his ultimate, he can apply disrupt to big tanks, but once again, it's just not enough to be relevant and this is why they are, they are on the E tier and F tier. So that's gonna be the tier list for the Scourge event of all the characters we have available, of course, you should start working on the S tier and A tier, and then as we get more information, start working on the B tier, and then you have to decide if you are going to work on the C or on the D tier, because there are some interesting characters here. Okay, so that's the tier list, let's move on and let's take a look at the infographics. All of this information or all of these infographics are available on my Discord, the link is in the description. Okay, so, here you can find all the T4R recommendations that uh, I give and uh, most of these T4Rs still apply to the Scourge event. Usually this is based for the, the best game modes that they are on. If the T4Rs are faded, it means that it's for a specific game mode like Alliance Wars. If they are not faded, that means they are good in all game modes. As you can see, none of these characters is worth getting to 7 red stars or six red stars, they are decent, but they are decent enough at uh, five red stars. Okay, so now we have to talk in terms of the eyes await. We have some suggestions here. We have striker, 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 skirmisher, and healer. We, uh, something you need to realize is that uh, we might need specific eyes awaits for the scourge event. This was a big thing on the previous scourge event. Some of the Web Warriors had to be healers, otherwise you'd not be able to get those last uh, Scourges with uh, like 200 plus Scourges. And other thing, you can use them healer or use them as Fortifier, because with Fortifier they will have the minor defense up and will, they will also have the barrier. So this is something very important and especially on this team. Yes, they will have defense up for two turns on spawn, but after that they will not. So the minor defense up and the barrier is going to be extremely useful especially if you are using that uh, scourge that applies heal block to your characters. So, in terms of eyes await, once again, we have these recommendations, striker, 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 skirmisher, healer, but you might want to change to fortifier, 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 and fortifier. Uh, it's an uh, uh, option, maybe keep uh, Miss Marvel as a skirmisher, it's an option that you have, and this is something that you have to consider in case you really want to go for a top 500 or top 50 or above that. So yeah, that's the, the T4s and the eyes await. Keep in mind that mindset that you might have to uh, change to fortifier or dealer, depending on what you have. And you can find, once again, all of these on my Discord. So this is the Young Avengers infographic. We also have the A-Force infographic already available on my Discord. Best E4s for each character, you can see a lot of them on Jessica Jones, a lot of them on Spider-Woman, Jessica Drew, none of them on Nico, and like I said, we have some faded ones here because they are only good for Alliance Wars, and for Captain Marvel, she doesn't, she doesn't have any special T4s. This team can get a defense up with a special from Jessica Jones, so this one is not gonna be as important to have a fortifier, so you might have a lot of characters with healer because this team has very little sustain. She can heal on turn, she can heal on turn, but these other two, they cannot. So this is something that we have to, be, uh, to worry about. And she gives barrier to the team, and even if they are not A-Force, so you might want to use a few characters as healers and others as fortifiers just to make sure that they don't take as much damage. This team overall is very strong because Jessica Jones gives the barrier, gives the resistance, and it also gives 40% more armor, so it's very, very strong. Once again, you can see that none of these characters are worth taking to six red stars or above, so they are just fine at five, and that's where you should try to get them. 
Ok, finally, we have the Inhumans infographic. Once again, this is all available on my Discord. Looks pretty legit. So we have all the characters here. Once again, you should only work, you should focus your work first on the Young Avengers, then uh, go after the, the best Inhumans and the best A-Force characters. So we have Black Bolt here with the, the best eyes away for him. You can see mostly the basic, the ultimate, the passive and the special once again for the unavoidable characters. Then Yo-Yo we have here for the constant assist and uh, this one she needs it for the additional focus. It's very, very important. The other ones, not very important at all. Uh, Crystal for the basic and the, the passive because she gives more healing. And if you use the healer eyes away to level blue, level three, uh, she'll heal for 54%, I think that's the correct number. So 54%, so that's a lot of health. And on turn, of course, you'll be healing and giving more regen. So that's gonna be convenient in case you are using those characters. Striker for Black Bolt, most of the cases, and the Skirmisher for Yo-Yo, uh, most of the cases. The only character that is worth to take into six Red Stars or seven is Black Bolt, but not exactly for this game mode. This is generic, this is not for the Scourge event. So if you don't have him at six or seven, don't worry about it. Uh, but if you are using him on other game modes like uh, Avengers Tower or uh, War or uh, Arena or whatever, then you can take him to seven red stars. The other ones, they are just fine at uh, five red stars, so that's good to go. And that's the infographic for the Inhumans. Once again, you can find all of this on my Discord. So finally, we have the best teams that I recommend for you to use. We have the Young Avengers for the Scourge event, so we have Miss Marvel, Miles, Squirrel Girl, uh, Kate Bishop, and Echo. This is the best posi positioning for these characters. She's going to tank, she's going to taunt very often. Miles is going to be sometimes on stealth, so that will block any kind of chain attacks. Squirrel Girl, she's pretty beefy, so that's fine. And you want to keep Echo in the corner because she's the slowest character, so you don't want her to be exposed to any kinds of slows. Otherwise, it's gonna take way longer for her to do her abilities. And uh, finally, we have the A-Humans, I don't know, some team. Uh, and uh, here we have two options. So we have Jessica Jones, uh, Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman, we have Black Bolt, and we have Yo-Yo. And you have to decide, do you want to use Nico, which is a new character, is a mystic character, has a trash kit, but has a decent speed? Or do you want to use Crystal, which is a character with a lot of synergies with these guys that can apply slows with their basic and it can stun summons and it has pretty decent stats but is not as fast. It's something that you have to make a decision and then you have to adapt their eyes away to specifically of these two characters. This one you want to have as a striker and this one as a skirmisher. But you might want to change the eyes away to of these ones and from the third character as well to make sure that they have the most survivability, mitigation, healing and so on. So yeah, that's the second team. This one, once again, is the first team. I, the infographic for the Inhumans, the infographic for the A-Force, the infographic for the Young Avengers, the tier list, and uh, that's it. You can find, once again, all this information on my Discord. There is also a chat to discuss about the Famine Scourge event. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. And if you found information helpful, Make sure you share it with your friends on Facebook and Discord. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe for more Marvel Strike Force content. And I will catch you guys later.